like trash. Joyce DiDonato's birthday was on February 14th, and I had every intention of making a video to celebrate it. But you know, your girl's been having some technical issues and still is. Um, I think this is my third attempt to make this video. So if this is the one you see, we did it guys. We did it, we did it Joe. Also, yes, I had a piece of cake to celebrate her birthday. <laughs> it was really cute. It was vanilla with sprinkles and everything, but I ate it in one of my previous attempts. So we're gonna have to do without it this time. So while I was choosing music for this video, I realized it would be kind of difficult to cover all of the repertoire that Joyce DiDonato does because she does a little bit of everything. She does Baroque, she does Romantic, she does Contemporary. It's just gonna be hard to get everything in. So I thought instead, I would spotlight one of the things that Miss Joyce brings to the world of opera that I think a lot of people don't, and that is her marvelous acting skills and just her love for the rep that she sings. So let's check some things out. First up, we are going to listen to Joyce DiDonato singing Handel's La Chiopianga. Okay, so first of all, this is a concert setting, but the emotion she's bringing to this piece is easily something that could be used on stage. I chose this piece because if you study singing in school, if you study music in school, this is probably the first piece that you were given to sing from operatic repertoire. And God knows all of us got up on stage and sang this dead-eyed and petrified. <laughs> so it's really nice to see an artist bring a really great skill level to it and a lot of heart and soul. I do love her high notes and how kind of delicate they are, especially for a mezzo because lots of mezzos have a tougher time getting up there. So I just appreciate the crispness of it, you know? Doesn't she look like she's on the verge of tears? She's got me feeling things, guys. Yes. Okay, for just a second, can we just kind of admire the scenery and the fact that all these period instruments are being used? This is an experience that I, as a singer, have not had the pleasure of doing, and I'm just, I'm hella jealous of Joyce right now. sinking into that day crescendo beautifully.
she just strings things out so beautifully, I think, and really brings so much emotion to a piece that, like I said, is not usually sung with a lot of feeling for most of us. So for the next clip, I love me some Donizetti, so we're going to listen to Joyce DiDonato sing some Maria Stuarda. This is a pretty short clip. It's kind of ensemble involved, but again, her acting in this is tremendous. is happening here in my heart. First of all, that was such a lovely, delicate onset for this beautiful prayer-like piece. Those tears glittering in her eyes. She's so earnest in singing this. Such a beautiful build. I love this so much. She sure knows how to back off of things. That is beautiful. That she's added a tremor to this character. Now, this is really impressive to me for a lot of reasons. First of all, to kind of think of adding that in as an actress is such a wonderful choice. Two, singing, especially classical singing, unamplified, is such an athletic event. And so much of doing it well is dependent upon your body alignment, what you're doing with your neck, your head, all of these things. And the fact that she's able to kind of add a tremor and still keep all of that in line is just extraordinary to me. looking heavenward, looking to other characters for backup. I just love it because let's be real folks, how many opera singers, great as they are, would have just kind of stared straight ahead and looked at the conductor during that? Joyce is undefeated in the acting game. So to round things out, we are going to end with Miss Donato's interpretation of Cenerentola. Now, I love me some Rossini, and I think that Joyce is just the perfect Cinderella because she really has this great effervescence about her. She brings such a bounce to the character, both Cenerentola and uh, Massenet Centrion, but we're going to look at the Rossini, of course, because it's my favorite. <laughs> This is 
such a cute production because it really reminds me of like some of those cartoons from back in the old days. <laughs> it's so cute. And I just really love how Joyce DiDonato has us all convinced that she is Cinderella. She's met her prince. She's finally happy. It's just a great quality that she has. <laughs> Shout out to Juan Diego Flores, who's playing Prince Charming and apparently wearing some kind of cupcake wrapper. So cute! <laughs> Also, um, color tourist singers weigh in in the comments and tell me what it's like to have a voice that is that beautifully flexible and can do things like that because I will never know and I would like to live vicariously through you. Here comes the finale, my favorite part. Ah! <laughs> You cannot tell me she is not having an absolute blast singing this. She is so extra with the ornamentation. I love it. Confetti was such a nice touch. Rossini wrote this great ending, and Joyce DiDonato does the most with it. God, I freaking love that opera. Okay, anyway, so listen, as this was originally intended to be a birthday tribute, happy, probably extremely belated birthday to Joyce DiDonato by the time this hits the internet. That's just a quick and dirty look at what I love about Miss Joyce. So, let me know what your favorites of hers are in the comments and let's chat about it like we always do. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.